We've got a fine basketball classic, the Princeton Invitational Basketball Classic. And we've already seen one Donnie Brook on this Friday evening, clustery Friday evening outside. The Northport Blue Demons heated up the gym with a 69-66 victory over the defending AAA state champion, Wheeling Park Patriots, earlier this evening. We've got the Tigers in for more basketball action as they take the home court with their 2-0 record, if you want to count an alumni victory against the Woodbridge Virginia Vikings, and we're looking for another fine basketball contest coming up in just a few moments. I've got Glenn May alongside, Charlie Wright, Bob Graham with a special pregame guest he'll be talking to, and Jack Lara is around somewhere. We'll be talking with him a little bit later on. We'll be back with tonight's pregame show right after this. We're back at Prince a jam-packed Princeton High School gymnasium. The Princeton team is warming up on one end of the court, the Woodbridge team on the other end of the court. And we just witnessed a very exciting 69-66 win by the Northport Blue Demons over a very fine defending AAA state championship team, Wheeling Park. And uh, with me in the pregame show, I have the uh, president or chairman of the Princeton Parks and Recreation Commission, Mr. Glenn Manning. And Glenn, welcome very much to the uh, broadcast tonight. Thank you, Bob. Glenn, I think the main reason that uh, I wanted to talk with you tonight, and we wanted to talk with you tonight, is that there's something that's about to happen in Princeton that I, I think is very exciting for sports, for recreation in the area. And you might tell us a little bit about the uh, new community center and the services that are available and what people can expect out there. Well, Bob, the uh, new community center is just about complete. It's about 98% complete. The basketball goals and the scoreboard clock have to be hung. And uh, the gymnasium which uh, will be done the first of next week, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to start our midget basketball program about the 10th of January. This is something that's been a long time coming to Princeton, but it, we're very excited about it because we have a, a regulation high school gymnasium, a two handball courts, a meeting room that can be divided into two, and a room in the second floor that will be available for other items such as weightlifting, uh, exercise equipment, and that type of thing as soon as we can obtain the uh, equipment uh, is necessary to operate this. One of the um, first things that will happen, I believe, is we're gonna, they're going to have some games out there this coming weekend, aren't they? The midget program is going to start? Well, the uh, midget program will start on the 10th. They'll have some games that on Saturday, I think uh, a week from tomorrow. Uh, Hopefully, then, we can get this program into full swing the following way. One of the things that's going to be a little bit different, you know, in the past, uh, you've had to rip the gymnasiums. You used to use the junior high gym, and I think everybody can remember the old flip-over scorecards. And then for the past couple of years since the junior high fire, uh, we've had to go to Oakvale or to Athens or just beg the gymnasium wherever we can. And so this year, we will be able to... Uh, have a gym for the people to play. You might indicate to everyone out there who is eligible to participate in these programs. Well, uh, the Midget program is uh, sponsored by various businesses and organizations, but uh, all citizens of the county are actually eligible to use this, this facility. It's not just for the city of Princeton, but it will be utilized by the citizens of the county. And uh, hopefully we'll have it going full-time operation from 9 to 10 on weekdays and then on 1 to 5 on Sundays by a reservation or a special program. Also be open on, on Saturdays from 9 to 10. Be open on Saturdays, too. You might indicate that, that uh, for record-keeping purposes, I believe the park board has decided to go with a membership type of uh, we, situation. Uh, we have gone to a membership type situation mainly for security control more than anything else so that we can keep track of the people that are uh, using the facility and uh, hopefully that will uh, help uh, control the crowds, the traffic, and such as that. If I'm a resident of the city of Princeton and I'm 61 years old, how much is this membership going to cost? Well, if you're 61 years old and you have the West Virginia Gold Card, uh, it will not cost you anything. You'll be a free ride to the uh, Gold Card holders of the city of Princeton. I believe I've heard you indicate that uh, something like uh, the 4,400 homes in Princeton, something like 2,000 of them are. Well, half of the population of the city of Princeton is retired or uh, people on some type of uh, well, uh, retirement check, Social Security, Railroad Retirement, 
sell the service or that type. If I were a 21 year old uh, student at Carswell College and I lived in the corporate limits, how much would it cost me to be a member of the membership of uh, residents of the city of Princeton is five dollars, and for non residents of the city of Princeton, it will be ten dollars. You might indicate now one of the it's been amazing to me. One of the most popular things around are handball courts and racquetball courts. And you might indicate to people that... Uh, we have uh, two courts that can be used for either handball or racquetball. We will uh, charge by the hour uh, for two players uh, $4 an hour on the Nazi prime time. That is before 5 o'clock of the evening. After 5 in the afternoon, it will be $5 an hour. If the, the four wants to play, there will be six dollars for the four people or seven fifty, depending on the time of day that they use it. My understanding is that, that is significantly uh, lower than some of the private handball and racquetball clubs in the area and even outside the area. I understand it. It's a lot lower than the, of course, the racquetball club in Bluefield, Virginia, which uh, is a, a large membership and then an hourly rate. Now, the reason for the membership fees and the, and the fees that we're going to charge or that are going to be charged at the new community center, you might explain to some of the people the, the funding for the community center and, and why it's necessary for the community center to support itself. The old Princeton Youth uh, facility on Honeaker Avenue was sold, and uh, the city and city money amounted to about $212,000. The park board through the building commission in Mercer County uh, sold bonds in the amount of $300,000 to get this facility built, and of course we have to pay that back, and we have to try to make the building uh, uh, pay for its operations in order to uh, come out and be uh, not have to uh, forfeit on bonds somewhere down the line. One of the things that was impressed me was that uh, the gas usage projected by the gas company alone was fifty-five hundred dollars a year. So as you can see, that uh, we estimate our utilities will run for gas, lights. Uh, water, uh, telephone, sanitation board will run in the neighborhood of about $7,500 a year. Plus the director and the personnel that needed to operate the facilities and we're projecting about, uh, I think, $30,000 a year for just the operation of the building. You know, I guess it's been three years ago, it was before the junior high fire, I can remember when uh, there was a very active assault uh, program in the city. There were a number of uh, local people participating. I remember Ronnie Barr who moved away and uh, some of the others. Will there be uh, women's programs and will there be we'll have programs? Women, uh, small girls, so we'll have a woman's leg, adult leg, and uh, we hope to have something going on in the gym and at all times. Well, Glenn Manning, thanks very much for being with us in this pregame show, and we will be back at this jam-packed Princeton High School in 30 seconds. All right. Craig, are we back? Yeah. Okay. And Craig tells me we're back. Hey, somebody took that hat. They die before the sun goes down there. That's all it's that good. And we're at the Princeton High School gym lately. I'm going to hey, Bob Graham finally got down here and sit down. He's a little clumsy. Yes. Charlie right alongside. Welcome aboard, Charlie. Charlie, I'll turn your mic on. Now you can. Welcome aboard, Charlie. Good to be here, Glenn. It looks like a, a packed house. I have never seen this many people in this gymnasium before. And I've been to many ball games here. And uh, I look for an exciting ball game. I've already seen, we've already seen one ball game tonight. And uh, pressure packed through the whole ball game. Uh, go ahead. The crowd may uh, have a factor in the ball game tonight. You may help Princeton, I think. And we got Jack and Larry sitting over there. Jack, welcome aboard, buddy. Please, Glenn. What do you think about it? We're a lot of people here. Well, I tell you, I was really surprised. Uh, this if, place is deep. If it wasn't air conditioning here while I'm sitting, I'd leave. Well, they opened up the windows behind it. felt pretty good. Hey, well, it's good. It's cold outside, huh? It's looked pretty hot in here. We had a pretty good ball game first game. Uh, tremendous ball game. Uh, Norfolk um, has that mystique. They think they're going to win, and they win it. Well, they did. Uh, they did. That's tremendous. And we got Craig over there. And Craig, oh, welcome aboard, buddy. Well, thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to a uh, uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's trying to mess up my headphones here. I'm looking forward to quite a, uh, a championship game tomorrow because both of these teams in here have great potential. And, of course, I've seen Jennings Boyd at work earlier with his Blue Demons, and I was very much impressed. Well, the Blue Demons took it to Wheeling Park. Uh, Wheeling Park uh, had a lead at the end of the first quarter of about 20-18. At one time, they had a six or eight-point lead, but 
Uh, Northport came back in the second quarter and just shut them down at 12 points. They went ahead at halftime, and boy, the uh, Demons have stayed there. Both teams went after each other pretty daggone good. It's a very physical game, didn't you think? Very much so, and I was very impressed with the way that Northport was able to stay with the uh, Patriots' overall size advantage. And, uh, well, as I say, there's not much else you can say for Jennings Boyd because seven state championships says it all. Yeah, kind of lucky, isn't it? <laughs> we got Bob Brown alongside. Bob, uh, you got about three seconds before we break for a commercial. How you feel? Hope everybody who's trying to get in tonight is able to go to Okay. With all that well and done, I'm Glenn May, and we're welcoming you to Preston High School, and we're going to follow 30 seconds for this commercial. We'll be back right after this.
Denmark has laid the wood to him, didn't he? So we'll have David Taylor on the line, and now we got a, a whistle as they rearrange somebody. Uh, a little late, late, uh, they just, they took one of the shots away, so now he's only shooting one shot. And Taylor has one free throw, it's good. Six to three. Tigers up. And St. Clair with the ball in the backcourt. Gets the press by Woodbridge. Gets it over to the wit. The wit. To the front court to Miller, way out top. Now he goes to the key, jump, fire from 14 feet. He got the bottom of the net. And Miller puts the Tigers up 8-3. to three. As the Tigers pressing now, Ditterman with the ball for Woodbridge. Moves it to the front court, left side. Comes to the top of the key, drops it over to Lloyd. Lloyd trying to go underneath, can't get it open. Now he gives it to Taylor. Taylor on the right side as the Witt plays the defense. Taylor firing, good. Taylor from 20 feet. It's the bottom of the net, 8-5. to five. Mendel, he seems either one miss. And St. Clair gets the ball to the front court to Miller. And Jim holds it up, waits for traffic to clear, leaves it for St. Clair, and he'll call the big signal. And they go to Miller on the high post. Miller drives the lane, leads it off to the east, firing out of the corner. A hook! And Aziz puts it down from the corner. 10 to 5, Tigers up. And Taylor with the ball in the back court for Woodbridge. Gets it to the front court. And he gets it to Howard. Howard driving, and there is a foul, a charging foul. Call on Ken Howard as Jimmy Miller takes the charge for the Tigers. And Miller gets up, walking gingerly, but he says he's all right. And on Howard, that's his first team foul, number one. And DeWitt will inbound it for the Tigers against a three-quarter court press by Woodbridge. He's with the ball, right side, back court, on the dribble, moves it to the front court, they double-team him. He gets it over to St. Clair. The pass deflected to Miller. As Miller gets deflected to Howard, picks up in the front court to Ditterman, firing for Woodbridge. No good, the rebound comes off to DeWitt as DeWitt takes it over top of Howard. DeWitt into the front court with it, still on the move. Stops at the corner court, gives it outside to St. Clair. Jeff gives it back to DeWitt, goes to the corner, firing. Good. James DeWitt from 16 feet, puts him in the net. 12 to 5, Tigers on top. As Ditterman will work it to the front court for Woodbridge. As he's playing the defense on him. Firing from 18 feet, good. Ditterman pounds it in from 18 feet away. 12 to 7, Tigers up by 5 now with 448 to play in the first quarter. As he's with the ball in the back court, gets it to St. Clair. Jeff moves it to the near side, takes it out across the center. To Eve, down the right side with it. Dribbling is back to the way, back to the way, out of trouble. Gives it to St. Clair, top of the key. To the wet left side, looks underneath, gives it back to St. Clair. He'll fire from 20 feet, it's off the plane, no good. Rebound, fought for Miller, has it taken away by Howard. Howard comes out with a pass intercepted by St. Clair. Trying to pass to Miller on a reverse pass, knocked out of bounds by Woodbridge. But St. Clair doing a 360 to pass. We've been a real shooting exhibition on this so far in the game. For 6 for 7. That's not bad. 6 out of 7. Inbound pass to Ease. Firing on the four away. It's on the iron. No good. Chipped away by Murray. Murray picks it off the floor now. Gets it out to the wet. The wet on the move. Puts it off the iron. No good. Rebound thrown down by Howard of Woodbridge. And he gets it to Ditterman of Woodbridge. Up court with it to Taylor. Puts the shot up. No good. Rebound to the wet. As the wet comes to the front court with it. On the move. Starts to drive. Going underneath, we got a whistle and a traveling call as the wit hits the floor. And the call is traveling as the wit gets up walking a little gingerly. It'll be out of bounds to Woodbridge in the back court. As they get it into Howard. Howard dribbling with it into the front court as Murray cuts him off. Howard goes to the lane, goes across the lane, fires good. He is fouled by Murray. And that's number two on Murray. Team foul number three on the Tigers, isn't it? Or two on the Tigers, okay. As we will have Kevin Howard on the free throw line for the Woodbridge Vikings. As the Tigers cooled off, they were six out of six at one time. Now they've missed about four shots in a row. As Howard on the free throw line, he'll put it up with the right hand, dribbling with it. It's on the way. He puts it up. It is off the end. No good. Rebound to Miller in traffic. Gets it over to St. Clair. Jeff puts it on the floor, moves it toward the front court and into the front court. 346 left to play in the first quarter. DeWitt with the ball left side. The Miller high post goes to the lane. Spink goes down the lane. Puts it up a little bit. Miller tips no good. Miller puts it up again no good. Miller tipping again no good. Miller puts it up and good. Oh, shooting for Sanders is bad, but look at it. Stay with it. And the rebound. That's what Red. Pressing in that. Being pressed by the Tigers. Lloyd gets it in the front court to Howard. Firing from way outside. Pull the short. Rebound to Taylor underneath. And we got a double dribble call on David Taylor. Uh, the Woodbridge Vikings, 14 to 9. The Tigers up by 5 with 3.21 to play in the first quarter. And St. Clair gets it into 
Ease, ease on the right side, backcourt, gives it back to St. Clair and Jeff to DeWitt. DeWitt takes it to the left side, puts it back to St. Clair, top of the key with it. The ease goes to the right corner to the baseline. Now he backs it out toward the corner, looking underneath. Now finally gets it outside to St. Clair. They go to Miller, high post, spinning jump shot, good. 16-9 as Miller puts it in. Ditterman works it toward the front court for the Vikings. Gets around St. Clair, comes to the front court. He'll shoot, shoot from 17 feet off the front end. No good, and Murray skies for the rebound. Holds it up, waits for Snyder to clear, and gets it out to St. Clair. And now Jeff will take it to the front court for the Tigers. So Ease, Ease in the corner right side, looking underneath. Drops it to Miller, Miller on the baseline, puts it up on the end, and he is fouled by David Taylor. <laughs> And that's Miller's fifth field goal in the game. Fifth field goal for Mark Jackson. That ain't bad. Five out of eight for Miller. Five out of eight. He missed all three of those on those tips down there. <laughs> and we got a timeout on the floor. So a timeout on the floor. Let's call time in for this message. <laughs> 233 left to play in the first quarter. The Tigers enjoying an 18 to 9 lead over the Woodbridge Vikings as the Woodbridge Vikings shooting a four out of ten, while Princeton hitting a little better than that. What are they hitting, Charlie? Uh, Princeton was seven out of ten. Seven out of ten? That's not bad. Seven out of ten. Well, they have Miller on the free throw line. He'll have one attempt as the bucket was good. Oh, nine for fifteen. Nine for fifteen for Princeton right now. Okay. As Miller on the line, he'll fire with the right hand. It's off the front iron and good. He rolled it over, rolled it in. 19 to 9. As Woodbridge, big press for the Tigers. They get it to Kevin Howard. Kevin into the front court with a circle to the left side. The Frank Clare deflects the pass and he dies it out of traffic. We got Phillips in the ballgame right now for uh, Murray. And they call each for the travel as he just root off that one out. And then they call him for traveling as he got to the seat. So it'll be out of bounds for the Woodbridge. It'll be at the quarter court front court if Kevin Howard will inbound the portal. He gets it into the Duderman. Duderman puts it on the floor of the left hand, moves it across court to Taylor. They go to Howard, high post, no good. Leave the whip. Guys, to pull a shot down. Gets it out. There's a whip next to the front court. He drives the baseline. Goes under, lays up. He's got it. Mike Eads drives the baseline. 21 to 9, the Tigers up. And Duderman in the back court with it for Woodbridge. Moves it to Howard on the high post. Top loose by the whip. Picked up by Phillips. Top loose. The whip, the whip goes down. Puts it up and in. James the whip on the cherry pick for the Tigers. And Taylor with the ball in the front court for Woodbridge on the right side. Gives it over to Duderman. Duderman high, holding overhead. Gives it to Howard. As Howard has it knocked loose by the whip. A foul called on the whip. James the whip called for the foul. And that is his first foul. Team foul number three on the Tigers. It'll be out of bounds to the Vikings. They'll make it on the far side. Kevin Howard will end down the court. And Howard puts it into David Taylor. Taylor trying to get it back to Howard. Has it deflected by Phillips. Now Howard picks it up. Gives and Miller rejects the shot. Comes off the iron and walks. Flips around. Picked up by Miller underneath. That we got a scramble. A wrestling back as Phillips goes in. St. Clair goes in. Is that a tag team out there? Well, there's four white jerseys and one green jersey. And Eads is in there. Okay, we have St. Clair, Phillips, Miller, and Eads in for the Tigers. That's what Was the whip calling signals on that? <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have a jump ball. St. Clair jumping against Hunter Woods. As Woods is about 6'4", St. Clair about 5'8", and Woods gets the tip to Taylor. Worked on Miller fires. He was fouled from behind by Phillips. And as Jimmy's wanting to shoot, that's number one on Phillips. Team foul number four on the Tigers is Miller was trying to let him shoot so he could get a chance rejected, and Miller and Phillips cutting from behind. 23-9, to nine, the Tigers enjoying an advantage over the Vikings. Of about 14 points right now in the first quarter. A minute 32 to play in the first quarter. As we will have David Taylor on the free throw line for the Vikings. He puts it up with the right hand. It's good. He got back iron, front iron, put it into the net. And that's what they count for fourth. A minute 32 to play in the first quarter. Tigers enjoying the lead. A 23 to 10 over the Woodbridge, Woodbridge Vikings. As Taylor fires again off the iron and good. He got front iron all the way to the glass and skips it back into the net. 23 to 11. And St. Clair on the move with it in the backcourt for the Tigers. To Miller. Miller into the front court on the dribble with it. Top of the key. Starts it down the lane. Goes under. Crammed up. Uh, Jimmy Miller. Very good. Number four for the season. Technical call on Jim for hanging his hand on the rim. That's right. The crowd will trade that. <laughs> the crowd will trade that. 25 to 11. Tigers up. And Kevin Howard will shoot the technical free throws. So far about Jimmy has 13 points. I'm not picking you up very well, Bob. Try it again. So far, the 
shoot him on from 15 feet. 33 to 17. Tigers up with six minutes and 11 seconds to play in the first half. As Jeff Sinclair takes it to the front court for the Dodgers. Top of the key with it. To James DeWitt. DeWitt on the right side moves to the baseline. Now he fires. <laughs> he ain't good, but he might have thought this. They put it in the bucket from 22 feet. 35 to 17. How many? That's 12 points. James DeWitt all on six field goals. Most of the time, they have Oh, yeah. Kevin Howard. As DeWitt six for seven. And Phillips takes it all away. In the backcourt for the Tigers. Out to St. Clair. Drives. Lays it up. Off the iron. No good. Rebound. Tipped around. Controlled by Dudeman and Woodbridge. And DeWitt kicks it out of bounds. It'll be Woodbridge ball in the backcourt. Getting the first substitute for Woodbridge. And it's gone over. He's had him listed as either 42 or 45, and he's wearing 45. Scott Hober into the ball game. As Duderman with the ball for Woodbridge, moves it to the front court. On the dribble with it in the front court. As he gets Taylor on the high post, he gives it right back to, uh, to Duderman. Duderman now firing from 15 feet. Got it. He's got his father where he can hit from it. 35 to 19, a 16 point advantage for the Tigers with 5 13 to play in the first half. Oh, well, that was Duderman's fifth field goal also. As he's with the ball, firing out of the corner from 20 feet, he's got it. If I can say that bucket is freeze. Yeah, Duterman into the front court with the forward bridge on the left side. Gives it outside to Joe Lloyd. Lloyd moves it around the horn to Taylor. Taylor on the right side. Phillips playing a defense on him. Now he starts to drive. Picks it up. Gives it to Lloyd. As Lloyd trained here to Howard. Cannot. As they get Hover free. And Hover gives it back to Howard deep in the corner. Howard comes around. Top of the key. Firing out of the key. And he is fouled by the wit, I believe. Wait a minute. I think it should be on the wit. Who they call him? it's on him. 32, it's on James DeWitt, and that's number two on DeWitt, team foul number five on the Tigers. That'll be a two-shot foul, and we'll have Kevin Howard on the free throw line for the Woodbridge Vikings. 440 left to play in the first half, Tigers enjoying a 37-19 lead. It's Howard on the line. He's ready. He fires with the right hand. It's good. He'll have a second attempt. And we'll get Murray off the bench and back in for DeWitt. No, for Phillips. As Phillips comes out. And we got somebody in for Woodbridge, number 32, come in there. It's Robert Brown. Came in for Woodbridge. As Howard fires, it's good. 37-21 with 4.40 to play in the first half. As Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court for the Tigers. To the right side to Eve. Goes to the corner with it. On the dribble now. Trying to get it to Miller. He gets it to Miller on the baseline. Goes under. Lays it up. And they call him for stepping on the baseline. As Hoper playing the low post defense. Put his foot on the baseline. And Miller had to come around him. And they call him for going out of bounds. As Duderman moves it towards the front court for Woodbridge. Into the front court now. Gives it to the far side to Howard. Howard backs his way toward the key. Spins. Fires. 14 feet. Good. Kevin Howard. 37 to 23. As Tigers up with four minutes and ten seconds to play in the first half. Jeff St. Clair into the front court to the wit on the left side. James holds it overhead, gives it to the ease. Eve goes to the lane, fade away. Off the iron, no good. Tipped by Miller, no good. And we got a whistle on a foul. I believe it's Miller over his back. It is on Jim moving over the back. And that's number one on Jim. Team foul number six on the Tigers. <clears throat> and that will put the big man, Scott Hobart, on the free throw line for Woodbridge. And how big is Hover? 6'6. Six, six. Weighs about 200, I guess. Hover fires with the right hand. It's off the flange and no good. Rebound pulled down by the whip. As James will put it on the floor, moves it to the front court with the right hand dribble. Brings it toward the left side, gives it to St. Clair. He's on the point position, goes to the top of the key with it. Now he'll fire from about 18 feet, no good, off the flange. As rebound comes out to Lloyd. Lloyd running with it to the front court. As it now moves, we got a traveling call on Lloyd. Did St. Clair deflect it? Evidently, he didn't. The official well, called it traveling. Well, he did, but the official didn't see it. Okay. St. Clair didn't, didn't get his hand on the ball. That's just as good. So the wet will inbound it for the Tigers in the back court. Gives it out to St. Clair. Jeff into the front court with it to Eads. Eads on the wing right side. Holds it overhead. Gives it back outside to St. Clair. They come to Murray with it. Now they go to Miller High Post. They double team him. He fires. Good. Makes it look kind of easy. 17 points. 17 points for Miller in the first half. As Duterman brings it to the front court for Woodbridge. Gives it over to Lloyd. They go to Howard. Goes across the lane. And Stephon, corking. 
And the ball picked up by Woodbridge now, taken away by St. Clair, and they've got it out to Ethan Lloyd. Wins the foot race in the backcourt as Woodbridge comes out with it. Gets it to Duderman. Duderman to Howard. Firing from the corner. Off the iron, no good. Rebound. Fought for. Knocked to the floor. Still on the floor as they scramble for it. Picked up by Woodbridge. And Duderman is forked by Miller. Duderman comes out with the ball again. He takes it out of traffic. Goes outside. Comes back in the eye of fire again. Off the iron. Rebound to St. Clair. As the import pass deflected by Woodbridge, picked up by Lloyd. They get it to Howard. He fired over top of the wind, no good. Rebound pulled down by Murray. Gets it out to Eads. Eads into the front court with it. On the move with a left hand dribble. Moves it to the right hand. Starts it to the left side. He'll fire from the baseline. Good. Mike Eads. 41 to 23 with 226 to play in the first half. Into the front court with it is Robert Brown. He gives it outside the tournament. Duderman top of the key with it, backs his way in. They double team him, he gives it out to uh, to Brown. Brown gets it to Lloyd. Lloyd, top of the key, back to Brown. As Brown standing on the wing right side, gives it to Duderman. Duderman way outside with it. And they get Kevin Howard, comes down the lane. Goes down the lane, we got a whistle on a foul on Miller on the block. That's number two on Kim. And team foul about seven or eight on the Tigers. It doesn't make any difference during the bonus. I got and it. Howard looked like a pullback coming through that Lord, He's hitting straight to go. I thought he traveled. I think he did too. Well, so Curtis Graham comes in, and uh, David Phillips says Jimmy Miller will get a chance to catch a breather. And who else did he sit down? Sit down St. Clair for a breather. We've got two minutes and four seconds to play in the first half. And we'll have Kevin Howard on the free throw line for the Woodbridge Vikings. As he shoots with the right hand, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Woodbridge, giving it back out to Howard. He fires again, it's good. And that rebound pulled down by David Mikolo and put up by Howard. So 41 to 25, the DeWitt brings it to the front court for the Tigers. Starts it down the right side, gives it to Curtis Graham, top of the key. They come to ease on the left side, firing from 18 feet, it's in and out, no good. Rebound pulled down by Hober of Woodbridge. Gets it out to Duderman. Into the front court with it on the drive to Mikolo, puts it up, no good. Rebound pulled off by Eads. Out to DeWitt. He fired from 20 feet, off the plane, no good, Phillips rebound, works underneath, and is fouled from behind by Robert Brown. And then put David Phillips on the free throw line, that's number one on Brown, team foul number three on Woodbridge. And that will be a two-shot foul, though, as David Phillips, the sophomore, was shooting when he was fouled. Mike Eads comes over and gets a word of wisdom from Coach Ralph Ball. What did Ralph tell him right then, Bob? I'm not real sure, but what can you tell us even play like they had his first half? As Phillips hits his first free throw, he'll have a second now. Keep up the good work. You probably told him to press on defense. <laughs> Phillips hits again, 43 to 25, a minute 32 to play in the first half. As the inbound pass to Kevin Howard, they get it back to Duderman. Duderman in the backcourt with it, on the dribble. Moving it towards the front quarter, Curtis Graham cuts him off. Marks it down the lane, starts it down the lane, drops it over to... Over, over, put the shot up, no good. It's slapped around. We got a whistle and a foul on somebody. May have been and it may have been called on David Michelow. Foul was on number 20, Michelow? Michelow, call for the foul. And it's number one on him, team foul number four. It's going to be Tiger Ball out of bounds in the backcourt. As James DeWitt will inbound it for the Tigers. We got a minute 18 to play in the, play in the first half. 43 25, Tigers enjoying an 18 point advantage. As Curtis Graham brings it right across the center circle. Top of the key to the left side to Eads. Works it toward the baseline. He'll fire from 12 feet off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Kevin Howard of Woodbridge. And Howard is a fine ball player for the Vikings. Gets it into the front court to Robert Brown. Hands it to Michelow. Michelow to Duderman. Duderman on the dribble with the top of the key. He'll fire from 18. He's got it. And Duderman, a fine shooter, a good shooting guard. Pours it in. 43 to 27. Tigers up. As Eads into the front court with it for the Tigers. To Phillips on the low post. Spins. Fires, no good. Rebound pulled down by Howard of Woodbridge. Out to Duderman. Duderman into the front court, drives it down the lane, gives it over to Howard. He draws drives, and we got a charging foul. Checking on Robert Brown. Robert Brown called on the foul as he took the charge. That's number two on Brown. Team foul number five. And checking in the ballgame for the Tigers right now is big number 54. That'll be Jeff Adams. And Jeff St. Clair comes back in. And we'll have Mike Eads on the free throw line for the Tigers. He'll shoot the one and one with 36 seconds left to play in the first half. The Tigers on top, 43-27. Mike Eads, the senior, standing six foot, 160 pounds. He'll fire with the right hand. 
He's got the ball right now on the free throw line. He puts it up. It's long. No good. Off the plane. Rebound pulled down by Hober of Woodbridge. As we seal the pass. Drive. Looks like we got a whistle. Foul on Nicola. Foul call on Nicola on the steal. Nicola, it is. Getting back into the ball game is Hunter Woods of Woodbridge. And then Fadid's back on the line to shoot a one on one again. Deeds fired. Good. 44 to 27 with 32 seconds to play in the first half. The Tigers enjoying that 17 point advantage. It's like 11 points. As Mike fires. Good. That's point number 12 for Mike Eats. As they call him Michael Earl, is that right? Mike Earl. Right. And Tim Bitterman with the ball for Woodbridge. Moves it to the front court down the left side. As East plays the defense on him. Brings it back outside. Gives it to Mikolo. Mikolo holds it overhead as St. Clair picks him up. Now starts it toward the top of the key. Gives it to Duderman. Back to the way in on Eads. And we've got a whistle and a foul on Eads. As Eads refused to give ground. That's number one on Mike. As Duderman has hit that shot all night. And Eads would not get in position to shoot it. And they call Mike for the foul. As Duderman standing on the free throw line, he'll shoot a one-on-one. -on -one. It's 45 to 27. Tigers up. We've got 15 seconds left to play in the first half. As Duderman fires, it is good. As Duderman on the line, he'll fire again. It is off the iron and good. He called it in. 45 to 29. And St. Clair with it. Two E's. He's in the front court. On the right side, the St. Clair, top of the key with it. To Phillips on the left side, they go to Adams on the low post left side. Back out to Phillips. He'll fire from outside. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound. Run down by Howard and Adams. The spot got a bounce down there. And what are they going to call on? Jump ball? I think it's called jump ball. Okay. And it'll be, who's going to jump? Be Robert Brown and Jeff Adams. No. And, uh. David Phillips also jumped. They said, no, it's going to be Jeff. Jeff. So Adams moves in. Brown's in. As the official puts it in the air, tip control by Adams, second by Eads, fires at the buzzer, and it's no good. So at the end of the first quarter of play, at the end of the first half of play, the Princeton Tigers, 45, the Woodbridge Vikings, 29, is in that second quarter. Woodbridge got 18 points, and the Tigers put 18 also on the board as they played it even up in the second quarter. Halftime score, Princeton 45, Woodbridge 29. We'll be back right after this. As the Tigers in the dressing room with Coach Ralph Ball, of course, the Vikings on the far side in the dressing room as we're working on the staff. We'll have them for you very shortly. As, uh, Charlie, you got the team staff ready? Yeah, here in the first half, Woodbridge from the field was shot 11 out of 31 for a 28% shooting percentage from the field in the first half. They pulled down 19 re rebounds and had nine turnovers. Uh, one of the big factors I think uh, is the poor shooting of uh, Woodbridge. They're only shooting 28% from the field. It's probably uh, due to the pressure defense that uh, Princeton is playing. They're, they're picking them up uh, sometimes at full court and putting a lot of pressure on them. Okay, and we'll be back with all the individual stats. First, let's pause for this message. Okay, Bob, you've got some individual stats on the Tigers. Uh, sure do, Glenn. I know you're getting ready for uh, an interview with a very important person. I think everybody wants to stay tuned for it. And uh, in terms of individual scoring, first for Woodbridge, Howard had three field goals, two of four to the foul line, a total of eight points in the first half. Taylor had one field goal, three of three at the foul line, five points. Woods came in, he had one field goal in the second quarter, and he two points on, on the hand. Boyd had no points. Duderman had six field goals, two of three at the foul line, 14 points. And Hover came in, he had one foul shot, he missed it, no points on the half. 11 field goals, 7 of 10 foul line, 29 points. For Princeton, Mike Eads had 5 field goals, 1 of 3 at the foul line, 11 points. Jeff St. Clair had 1 field goal for 2 points. James DeWitt had 6 field goals for 12 points. Stephon Murray picked up 2 fouls. And as, uh, as we have James DeWitt, Stephon Murray, and Ben Miller on ball with 2 fouls. Murray did not score. Jimmy Miller had eight field goals, one of one at the foul line and 17 points. David Phillips hit his only two free throw opportunities for a total of two points, giving the Tigers 20 field goals, five of six at the foul line, 45 points. Okay, Jack, you got some shooting percentages on the individual there a little bit, so give those to us quickly and then we'll uh, come back to it. All right, you're on. 
Okay, Glenn. Jimmy Miller was the uh, big gun in the first half. He was 8 of 11 from the field. 1 of 1 free throw line for 17 points. James DeWitt was 6 of 8 from the field for 12 points. Mike Eads was 5 of 10. And 1 of 2 from the, from the line for 11 points. Jeff St. Clair only made one field goal out of 5 attempts for 2 points. Uh, Phillips was 2 for 2 from the line for 2 points. He was 0 of 2 from the field. Uh, also, Jim Miller had four block shots in the first half. Not a bad night's work, is it? No. Nope. Okay. we got two more quarters to go. We're going to pause for a commercial, and Craig will be back home with uh, Gail Kettler, the WVU coaching staff, the head basketball coach. But first, let's pause for this message. We're back at the Princeton High School Gymnasium. I've got uh, Coach Coach Gail Kettler of the WVU BU Mountaineers alongside. And first of all, we'd like to welcome you to Princeton, Coach Kettler. Thank you very much. This is not my first time down here. I've been down here quite a few times. Well, we're, we're happy to see you each and every time. First of all, we want to ask you what you think of the Princeton Tigers. Well, I tell you, uh, I've seen quite a few high school games this year, and uh, they just look awesome in that first half. They're really running the fast break nicely. Their defensive pressure's been great, and uh, you guys shoot the ball like that all the time? Well, you see, uh, Coach Ball has some practice up on top of the mountain, and when they miss, they have to go chase the ball, so. Well, we're going to start doing that in Morgantown, because we're going to we need something <laughs> to improve our field goals and free throws, and they're sure knocking them in tonight, I'll tell you that. Well, you start talking about the Mountaineers. Let's talk a little bit about the Mountaineer program. The Mountaineer program is definitely on the move, isn't it? Well, it better be. we got to get a new coach if it's not. <laughs> Well, we, we like to think so. Uh, two years ago when we took over, of course, uh, uh, we didn't have a, a great amount of athletes, I didn't think, and each year we've improved that some, and right now we have nine freshmen and sophomores in there, and uh, we also have nine guys that are six foot seven or bigger, and of the eight games we've played this year, no one has out-rebounded us, in, including Ohio State, and uh, last year we won the Eastern Eight uh, uh, league uh, rebounding chase, and so that's that's one of the places you start with it. Now we have to improve our field goal accuracy some, and make some of those daggone free throws. If we'd have made our free throws, or a little better percentage, uh, even 70%, we'd be 8-0 right now. But uh, we need to improve in that area, and I hope we'll do so before too long. Well, you know, West Virginia, a lot of people don't realize the basketball talent that is raised right here in West Virginia. And I'm sure you, as coach of WVU, are very aware of the homegrown talent that the West Virginia high school system turns out each and every year. Well, uh, the thing that disturbs me the most is that uh, to leave a, a guy like Jeff Snyder goes over to VPI and play, and then a guy like Alan Williams goes to Duke and play, or, or at least he attends Duke, he's not playing much. But these guys can play for, the, for their own university here, and that's uh, Jimmy Miller's case again, you know, and, and several other fellows in the state. And if we're to have a great basketball team and return to the glory years like we had back during the early 60s and uh, late 50s, then we're going to have to keep these people in the state. And uh, we, we're doing everything we can do at the university to get them to come. Uh, the head coach at Duke never saw Alan Williams play a game. I was here eight or ten times, and Gary McPherson was here every game. And uh, that's all we can do. We can't do anything illegal, promise them cars, do all that kind of thing. But at the same time, uh, we'd like to get Jimmy Miller and Morgantown. We told him he's our number one prospect. We've told the people down here. We've been to see him. We've been to watch him practice. And now uh, all, all we have to do is uh, hope that he'll sign with us. While I'm talking with you, uh, I'd like to also uh, say hello. I know he doesn't come to the games down here, but one of my closest friends in life has been Joe Thorne. And I know he's listening to the broadcast, and I, I want to say hi to him before I forget to do so. I was down earlier in the year and talked with Joe and uh, Mrs. Thorne. They're great people, and uh, Rod and I were roommates for a couple years in Morgantown. And uh, so I'm a little bit more familiar with Preston than you think I am. I used to come home with Thorne uh, for Christmas breaks. We had a lot of fun down here. Well, you know, a lot of people in our listening area, we have, of course, the North Fork Blue Demons in here for the uh, Holiday Classic, the Princeton Classic. And, of course, they had defeated the Wheeling Park Patriots a little bit earlier in the evening. But you know a prospect that WBU got out of, uh, out of North Fork is Russell Todd. A lot of people wondering about the progress of Russell in your program up there. He's doing a great job for us. He started almost all the season last year, but he missed some of our practice season. But this year, he's really improved fundamentally. He's matured a lot. He's a starting forward for us. Who do you think the happiest would be right now, Russell Todd or Alan Williams right now? Well, I'm not sure I'm in a position to, to, to answer that. I'm just asking you theoretically, who do you think? A guy's playing first team and playing 38 minutes a game and doing well in his academics, or a guy sitting on the bench? What do you think? Uh, probably Russell Todd. Yeah, I think so, too. So what I'm trying to tell you is that these guys have an opportunity to play in Morgantown, and we need those kind of folks. And I told Russell that if he came to the university and committed to us early like he did, that, uh, that 
that he'd have a great chance to play. I didn't promise him first team. I don't know if Jimmy Miller can make our first team or not, but he'd have a, he'd have a great chance to play and a chance to prove himself, and it wouldn't be sitting on the bench and be playing uh, right away as a freshman. And this is the thing I think these young men have to consider. And I just saw Mrs. Todd a minute ago and spoke to her and told her I was flying up to Mass tonight in a university airplane. I told her I'd tell Russell that I saw her and said hello to her. But uh, he's very happy right now, doing a great job for us. And he has not touched the surface on, on, on what kind of player. He's, he's going to be a great player for us in two more years. You know, we're talking a lot about recruiting, and a lot of people don't realize that recruiting is a very big part of major college coaching. I've never seen a great coach who didn't have great players. Anybody that says they have had a great program and didn't have great players are tripping. Coach Catlett, I want to ask you a question. How much travel distance do you put in a year in recruiting? Well, all four of you guys put together. I probably travel about five tennis more all they put together. <laughs> How long does it take you to get into Massachusetts this evening? We've got a two-hour and a half flight once we leave here. We've got an hour car drive once we get there, and we'll get there about 4 o'clock in the morning. But it's well worth it to see high school basketball like this. All righty. Gail Catlett alongside in the Princeton High School gym. Nate Jim will we'll return with second half action right after this. All right, as Gail Catlett sitting alongside, very nice to be with us. And also with him is Gary McPherson. And I guess you wouldn't find a more personable individual than Gary McPherson. We send him down here a lot, and we certainly enjoy him coming down. I, I would call him effervescent, but then everybody makes fun. <laughs> <laughs> but a very personal individual, and we certainly enjoy him down. The Tigers and the Vikings ready to go now. 45-29, the Tigers on top at halftime, but we're ready to go. As we'll have David Taylor in the jump against Jimmy Miller for the Tigers. The Tigers coming with Miller, Murray, Eads, DeWitt, and St. Clair as the toss in the air and the tip taken by the Tigers as the Eads controls it in the backcourt. As Eads gives it to St. Clair, and Jeff will bring it to the front court. To the right side, Eads on the wing. Gives it back to St. Clair, top of the key. They go to Murray around the horn. They go to Miller on the low post. Goes down the baseline, puts it up and in. As Miller, working beautifully on the baseline, uses the glass, and gets the bucket. 47-29, the Tigers up. As Duderman into the front court with it now for Woodbridge. To the right side, to Lloyd. Lloyd gives it back to Duderman, and he works it toward top of the key. As they get Tober on the high post, gives it back to Duderman. As St. Clair cuts him off. They move it into Taylor. Taylor to the top of the key. Starts it down the right side. Eads cuts him off. He can't back his way in. As Murray cuts him off. Now he'll fire. It's off the iron. No good. And Miller controls and traffic. Gets it out to St. Clair. Jeff on the move into the front court to Eads. Eads works it into the lane. Slips it back outside to St. Clair. We got a traveling call. Seven or nine up to play in the third quarter. The Tigers on top, 47 to 29. As Duderman will bring it to the front court for Woodbridge. Holds it overhead. Gives it to the far right side to Joe Lloyd. Lloyd comes back across the top of the key. And now he gives it outside to Duderman. Duderman on the dribble. of St. Clair looking at him. As he gets it to Kevin Howard. Kevin backs his way down the lane now. He'll fire from 13 feet. How off the glass and got it into the bucket. 47 to 31 as the Tigers come to the offense. Jeff St. Clair on the dribble with it to the front court. To the right side to the wit. He's on the wing. Looking underneath now. He fires from 20 feet. Got it. As the wind hits nothing but the bottom of the net. 49 to 31. As the Tigers move on top, as Duderman brings it to the front court, goes to the left side, fires a jump shot good. Duderman, a fine shooting guard, hits that one from about 14 feet. 49 to 33, as St. Clair will come to the offense for the Tigers. To the right side to the wind. Drops it to Miller on the baseline, goes under, puts it up, and we got a whistle and a traveling call. And Miller says, oh no, he had the one step in the jump. But the official says, oh, you traveled, and the official wins the argument. Why is that, always? He always wins, doesn't he? <laughs> so Duderman into the front court with it now for Woodbridge. So Hober gives it back to Duderman. Backs his way down to the lane. Turns around, can't get the shot off. But St. Clair flips it away, but it's picked up by Kevin Howard. He drives the side of the lane, puts it up, and Miller calls for goal, did not he? As Miller had a hand up over the uh, iron, evidently, and they call him for the goal, did not he? Whit. Inbounds it to St. Clair, and Jeff will move it to the front court, to the right side to Mike Eads. Eads to Miller, on the low post, goes under, puts it on the glass, he's got it in heavy traffic, as Jimmy Miller wearing the glass out. 61 to 30 point. 21 on the night for Jim, that's not a bad night, is it? As Duderman with the ball for Woodbridge, top the key to the right side to Loy, gives it back to Duderman, holds it overhead, looking underneath, turns around, and moves it. To Hover goes under, hooks it up and over top of Miller. No good. Miller rebounds. We got a whistle on. It's knocked out of bounds over Woodbridge. It'll be 
see some empty seats on the other side. I think I want Kevin Howard, the official says, so it'll be Tiger Ball. As the win is bounces to Eads, to St. Clair, to Eads on the far side, firing from 18 feet off the iron, no good. Miller tips it up to the end, and he tips it off the glass. 53 to 35, Tigers up. As Duderman brings it to the front court to Howard. He'll fire from 12, 14 feet, no good. Rebound to the West. The West beats it out of traffic to St. Clair over to Eads, deflected, taken away by Duderman. As Woodbridge comes back, Duderman firing, good. As Duderman from about 11 feet scores an end. Duderman's 18 point, 18 point, by the way. He's a pretty good shooter. St. Clair, top of the key with it. They go to Miller, high post now. Miller starts it down the lane, they double team him. We got a whistle and a three second call. I wonder if the ball was loose in there and no one had control of it. Is the three seconds the appropriate call? Gooderman into the front court for Woodbridge. Gets it underneath to Taylor. Puts the shot up and in. David Taylor hits it for Woodbridge. Oh my 53 to 39. A 14 point advantage enjoyed by the Tigers with 4.16 left to play in the third quarter. St. Clair to DeWitt on the far side. Starts it toward the baseline. Now he goes to Miller. High post firing. Off the flange. No good. Rebound. Pulled out by Duderman in traffic. Brings it to the front court. Starts it to the key. To the far side with it to Lloyd. Firing good. Joe Lloyd from about 12 to 14 feet from the right side. Puts it in the net. 53 to 41. Now the Tiger lead is struck to 12 points. As Eads with the ball on the far side, goes to the baseline, fires, no good. Rebound tipped up and in by Miller. Fifty-five to forty-one. Tigers out by fourteen. They get twenty-five points for Kenny. As Tim Duderman into the front court with it. To Kevin Howard, firing out of the lane, no good. Rebound pulled out by DeWitt as Howard put up the air ball. They got Eads on the move, goes down, lays it up, off the iron, no good. Rebound comes out to Lloyd. He gets it over to Holbrook, gives it right back to Lloyd into the front court to Howard. Howard will fire from 20 feet. It's off the iron, no good. Rebound slapped around. Picked up by Miller. He is roll blocked from behind by David Taylor. And boy, the way he roll blocked him, he could tear up a leg, but Miller's up. And that stuff keeps happening. I still say Ralph Ball's hair's going to be as white as his <laughs> That's the foul number two on Taylor, and the Tigers call a timeout. So a timeout on the floor. Let's take comment for this. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> a little kidding going back and forth between the West Virginia coaching staff. So I guess I can tell the story. Talking with the Hill Cabinet and thinking for the interview at halftime, and he said, Well, that's good. I said, We'll try to get uh, Gary on whenever we can. He said, No, no, don't, don't put Gary on. I said, Why not? He said, It'd be like another Jackie Gleason show. <laughs> 3.13 left to play in the third quarter. 55-41, the Tigers enjoying a 14-point advantage. And the Tigers will have the ball out of bounds in the backcourt. And James LeWitt will inbound it for the Tigers. And Jeff takes it to the front court. On the dribble with the top of the key. To DeWitt on the right side. Wing starts it toward the baseline. Now he'll fire from 20 feet. He puts it in the bucket. 57-41, Tigers up. Uh, Tim Fitterman will bring it back to the front court for Woodbridge. It's a DeWitt deflects the pass. He deflects it. It's thrown down by Howard of Woodbridge. Throws across the lane. Has the ball knocked loose. Picked up by Lloyd. No good. He puts the shot up. Stefan rebounds in traffic. He is fouled by Howard. And Stefan gets a little mean out there, doesn't he? Stefan is all arms and legs, and he does. He's an excellent rebounder. He has good quickness. And uh, he goes after him. The, the, uh, that's number two on Howard. And team foul number two on the Vikings. As DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair. St. Clair to the front court with it. Top of the key. They go to Eads on the left side. Gives it right back out to St. Clair. It's deflected as Duderman comes out of the back with it for Woodbridge. In the front court. Picks it up. Fires good. He hit it from about eight feet. A very good shoot. 57 to 43. As St. Clair to the front court. To Eads on the left side. Back to St. Clair. They come to the near side to Murray. As Stephon goes to the baseline. Fires good. He is fouled. That's on Howard, too, I believe it. It is on Ken Howard, and that's number three on Howard. And that'll put Stephon on the line. That's team foul number three on the Vikings. By the way, that was Stephon's first points of the ballgame. Uh, Stephon's got a bunch of them. Duderman's in double figures. What's Duderman got now? 
Duderman shows uh, 20 points. As Pimpon hits the free throw, Duderman has 20 points. 60 to 43, Tigers up. As Taylor in the front court with it for Woodbridge. To Duderman, Duderman firing from 20 feet off the front iron, no good. Follows the shot, goes under, puts it up, and we got a traveling call. It's be no good. And it'll be out to the Tigers. He changes his shot up and, and arches that ball very high when he gets in heavy traffic. As St. Clair brings it to the front court. To DeWitt. DeWitt firing from 20 feet. Off the iron, no good. Murray fighting for a rebound. It's double team taken away by Taylor and Woodbridge. Out to Duderman. To Howard. Goes to the front court. Lays it up. Good. Kevin Howard puts it up. A 6'4 senior from Woodbridge. As St. Clair brings it back to the front court. Tigers up by 15. Eads with the ball. Goes to the corner with it. They double team him. Gets it back outside to St. Clair. Top of the key. They come to Murray. Murray on the wing up back to St. Clair, finds off the key, no good, rebound pulled out by Lloyd, DeWitt takes it away, DeWitt comes up with the ball, and now starts his dribble, the door goes to baseline, fires, it is no good, we got a charging foul on Jim, that's number three on Jim, team foul number one on the Tigers, it'll be out of Brown to Woodbridge, they'll have it in the backcourt, we got a minute 23 left to play in the third quarter. As Tim Duderman will bring it to the front court for Woodbridge. To Hover. Hover in the corner with it and has the outlet pass blocked by DeWitt. Blocked out of bounds by DeWitt. So it'll be out of bounds to Woodbridge. Kevin Howard will inbound it for Woodbridge. As he gets it in to David Taylor. Taylor gives it outside to Tim Duderman. And Duderman starts it across the key. Gives it to Taylor on the wing left side. They come back to the near side to Kevin Howard. He drives. Gets a screen from Hover. Fires. No good. Rebound. Tips around. Pulled down by Eads of the Tigers, finally. Mike is out to the wet with it. The wet goes underneath the St. Clair. Put the shot up. No good. Tip on. Rebound. Put the shot up off the iron. No good. Tip by St. Clair. Got it. Tip St. Clair. Tipping in a crowd. Got the bucket. 62 to 45. The Tigers up. As Duderman gets the ball to Lloyd. In the front court to Taylor. Firing off the baseline. Good. Oh, my David Taylor. As 22 to 47, the Tigers enjoying at least. Thank you. As DeWitt drives the baseline, fires no good. And the ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be out to the Tigers. It's called out off of Woodbridge. As DeWitt inbounds it to Eads. In the corner, comes back up around the top. And who fired it? I got distracted. Mike Eads. Mike Eads Mike e hits the bucket. 64 to 47. The Tigers up with 19 seconds up to play in the third quarter. As Lloyd into the front court with it for Woodbridge. Gives it back to Duderman. St. Clair playing the pressure. He goes to the lane. Gives it back outside to Lloyd. Now they come to Kevin Howard on the near side. Back to Lloyd. He'll fire from 17 feet. Good. 64 to 48 with three seconds on the clock. As he's to the front court. Firing from midcourt. Off the glass. No good. The end of the third quarter play. The Preston Tigers 64. The Woodbridge Vikings 49. And we'll be back right after this. The Tigers leading 64 to 49 with eight minutes to play. Well, if we got any foul problems, it's going to hurt us, Bob. Well, Jimmy Miller has three. Stephen Murray has two. James DeWitt has two. All in all, I think Christmas in very good shape. I also think that the only player for Woodridge who has, well, there's four players with two. But uh, Kevin Howard has one. And uh, Taylor, two. Michelon, Michelow, two. Michelow. And Brown, two. Really, I don't think foul problems are going to be too much of a problem in this fourth quarter. What do you got, Charlie? You think it's really interesting? Yeah, uh, Woodbridge picked up their shooting from the field. They've made 10 out of teams from the field, so they're, they're warming up. That ain't Dude, bad. Is. That ain't bad. Craig's got something over. Okay, Jack. Okay, Jimmy Miller was, um, through the third quarter, was 12 out of 16 from the field, one of one from the line for 25 points. James DeWitt had um, 8 of 13 for 16 points. Okay. As we're ready to go, as Miller jumps against David Taylor. As Miller tips it to Murray, and we got a call against Mike Eats for violating the lane of play. All right. No, it's against uh, David, as uh, Kevin Howard, for violating the Woodbridge. It'll be Tiger Ball. It's DeWitt inbounds it to St. Clair. St. Clair comes to the top of the key to the right side to Eads. He, I mean, to DeWitt. He's on the wing. He drops it to Miller. He's in heavy traffic, spinning, firing off the glass. No good. Miller fire, follows the shot, knocks it out of bounds. It'll be Woodbridge ball. As 
pass. Tim Durbin will move it to the front court, and then he gets it over to Joe Lloyd. Joe holds it overhead, gives it back to Durbin. He comes toward the top of the key, starts it down the right side of the lane, and traffic firing out of traffic on it. Just the front of the iron and got it up on the glass and dropped it. 64-51. And Jeff St. Clair will move it back for the Tigers. To ease. He's on the left side. Starts it into the corner. Holds it up. And gets it back outside to Jeff St. Clair. They go to Miller. Into the lane. He's firing. It is no good. He is fouled by Hover. Scott Hover had him as he started his move. And that's number one on Hover. Team foul number four on Woodbridge. And it'll be a shooting foul. And Jim will go to the line. Well, Jim's total for the night, 25 points, 25 points. He's one for one on his only uh, other free throw team. Okay. Uh, Jim Miller on the line right now for the Tigers. Put the free throw up and in. You don't have a second. 65-51. Tigers up by 14. As Jim will have another. 7-15 left to play in the ball game. As Miller fires, good. 66-51, as Tim Duderman gets it to Joe Lloyd, and Joe moves it to the front court for Woodbridge. They get over on the high post, and the wind deflects the pass, works on Duderman, and he pulls up and fires off the iron, no good. Balls the shot, goes in the way. That's number one on Lloyd. That was a foul on the drive. I'm going to shoot the one and one. Okay, that's five uh, team fouls. Okay. Beach, uh, James DeWitt's first attempt to foul out tonight. How many points have you got tonight? Uh, 16. Is that a bunch, huh? 17 after this. Oh, you jinxed him. Stop Rebound comes good. off the iron. Pulled down by Scott Hover of Woodbridge. Gets it to Tim Duderman into the front court. The wit knocks it loose. Oh, 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 oh. Turn the circle. Works down. Takes it down. Fire from the baseline. We got a wide foul on what they call. Scott Hover. On 45, Scott Hover. Two shot foul. And it's a two shot foul. So the wit will be on the line. Now they've got the wrong win on the scoreboard. No, it's okay. It's 45. 45. Yeah, they had the free throw. It's in and out again. No good. He's going to be moving the hit. Let him back off and run at it, and he'll get it, maybe. 66 51. Tigers up as the wit fires. It's good. 67-51, a 16-point advantage for the Tigers with 6.51 to play in the ball game. As Tim Duderman works the back court against St. Jeff St. Clair, moves it to the front court. They get it to Joe Lloyd. In the corner to Kevin Howard, firing out of the corner. It's off the iron, tipped up by Taylor, no good. Rebound pulled down by Miller. Puts it out to Eads. Eads on the break. Works it under. Fires. Nope. And Stephon puts it up and in. As Eads put it up, no good. And Stephon got the bucket. Stephon picks up his fifth point of the ball game. 69-51. Tigers up as Kevin Howard with the ball in the front court for Woodbridge. To Tim Duderman. As Duderman works to the lane. He'll fire from 18 feet. He's got it. That gets the shooter. 69-53. 24 points for Duderman. As St. Clair into the front court with us for the Tigers. Looks at the bucket. Now he'll fire from 20 feet. It's pulled it short off the front iron. As Duderman comes out with it. Into the front court, moves it to the left side to Howard, drives, puts up and in. Kevin Howard on the bucket for Woodbridge. 69 to 55. As Jeff St. Clair brings it back to the front court for the Tigers. Drops it to Miller underneath, puts it up and in on the alley oop. 71 to 55. The Tigers up. As St. Clair almost on the steal from Suderman, gets it over to Joe Lloyd. Joe gets it to Howard on the back door, and he's got it. The back door opened up, and Kevin Howard got the bucket for Woodbridge. 71 to 57. Tigers enjoying that lead. It's Jeff St. Clair into the front court with it. The James DeWitt on the right side, firing. Off the iron, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Taylor of Woodbridge. Gets it outside, it's taken away by DeWitt. DeWitt gives it to Miller, slammed them. There's old Jim buried in the bottom of the neck. 31 points. 73 to 57 as Woodbridge into the front court with it. Over with the ball to Howard. Firing out of the corner. Good. Kevin Howard from about 18 feet. Howard's picked up four field goals here in this uh, fourth quarter. As Jeff St. Clair brings it to the front court for the Tigers. 73 to 59. They're on top as Mike Eads with the ball in the corner right now. Gets it back outside to St. Clair. They got Miller on the high post. Benning firing. He is fouled. And that foul will be on Scott Hover. And we get David Phillips in the game. That's number three on Hover. David Phillips will come in for the Tigers and also coming Hunter 
Tiger Woods, with Woodbridge, and Stefan comes out for a breather for the Tigers. Stefan had five points, but he's played next for ball game for freshman here tonight. He's been just all over that course. Kind of mean on the board, though, wasn't he? Well, he was especially mean under that. Those elbows rattle on more heads than you can shake stick in. Six, six rebounds for Murray. Murray had six rebounds? Six rebounds. As Miller puts his first free throw up and in, 74 to 59. That's 32 points for Jim tonight. As Jim ready to fire again, he puts it up good. 75 to 59. 443 left to play in the ball game. The Tigers enjoying that 16 point advantage now. As Tim Duderman moves it toward the front court for Woodbridge. Puts it all the way down to Taylor. Taylor gives it outside to Lloyd. Lloyd gives it back to Duderman, top of the key with it. And he'll spin and fire off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by DeWitt. As James on the dribble with it, drops it to the front court to Eads. They got Phillips and Miller. Miller in the lane with it. Starts it down, and they've got a traveling call. And they said he was up and down. 75 to 59. Tigers up with 421 left to play in the ball game. As Tim Duterman moves it to the front court for Woodbridge. Gives it to Joe Lloyd. The ball there across court with it to Kevin Howard. Goes across the lane, puts the shot up, no good. Rebound pulled down by Phillips. Phillips gets it out to St. Clair. Jeff on the move with it to the front court. Has it tipped away, picked up by Duterman. Duterman into the front court with it for Woodbridge. To Kevin Howard. Drives over top of Miller. We got a whistle and a foul on the charge on Kevin Howard. Well, that's uh, Kevin Howard's fourth foul, but Princeton has only been called for one foul in the second half. Is that right? That's it. And uh, that foul was on Jimmy Miller. I can't believe that. Princeton was one foul in the whole second half. One. A little, little strange. Jimmy Miller on the free throw line right now. That was Kevin Howard's number four foul. Team foul number six or seven on Woodbridge. <laughs> what? Jimmy Miller <laughs> hit the free throw. 34 points. Of course, you know they make them practice free throw shooting down here now with a with a whipple ball uh, rim. And when you make it the basketball like that, it ain't much trouble making these big rims. <laughs> That's Jim fired the second free throw. It's no good. 76 to 59. Woodbridge comes off with a tip. Middleman into the front court with it for the Vikings. To the right side to Joe Lloyd. Joe flips it across court to Kevin Howard. He'll fire from 18 feet. It's off the iron. No good. Rebound pulled down by Howard as he followed the shot. We got a whistle and a foul. Before the shot, I don't know. So the it was good as he followed the shot. And the foul yeah. called on. Who was the foul called on? Jeff Sinclair. That's number one on Jeff. That's number one on Jeff. And that put Kevin Howard on the free throw line. That's the second foul called on the Tigers in the second half. And we got 344 left to play in the ball game. As Kevin Howard fires the free throw, no good. Miller rebound. Out to St. Clair. Jeff puts it on the floor and moves it to the front court. A 2-3 zone being played by Woodbridge. To Eads firing from 18 feet good from the left side on the wing. Mike Eads with that right hand just pops at the bottom of the net. 15 for Mike. 78 to 61. As Duderman moves it to the front court for Woodbridge. To Howard on the left side. Back to Duderman. Duderman goes to the side of the key. Fires off the iron. No good. Rebound underneath by Taylor. Puts it up and in. Woodbridge has got a couple of fine ball players. Kevin Howard and Tim Duderman are real crappy ball players and real fine ball players. They can put the ball in the hook. As the wit with the ball on the right side for Woodbridge. And for Princeton goes to the corner. Fires. No good. Woodbridge rebounds. As Taylor goes in the air to pull it down. Gets it out to Duderman. Duderman in the front court with it to Howard. He'll fire. Off the iron, no good. Rebound, fought for, brought down by Eads. He's into the front court with it. And he's run down from behind. It's picked loose, picked up by St. Clair. Gets it back to Eads in the corner. He'll fire out of the corner. Send it out, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Hunter. A Woodbridge gets it out to Duderman. They go to the far side to Davis. Puts it across to Howard. And David Phillips rejects the shot for the Tigers. Duderman comes out with the ball for Woodbridge. To Joe Lloyd on the far side wing position. Gets it to... Hunter Scott underneath, he puts it over, picked up by Howard, puts it up and in. He is fouled by James DeWitt. And that's foul number three on the Tigers in the second half. And that will put Kevin Howard on the free throw line. That bucket was good, by the way. 22, 24 points for Kevin Howard on the night. Kevin Howard with 24, and Duderman's got about that many, hasn't he? 
Duderman has six field goals, two for two, 14 half, and one, two, three, four, five field goals, 24 points. As Howard on the line, fires a free throw, it's good. 78 to 66 now. 12 point advantage for the Tigers as Woodbridge cuts into the lead a little bit. 220 up to play in the ball game. As Jeff St. Clair into the front court with it to James DeWitt on the left side, on the wing. Drops the Miller on the post, goes to a lane, not loose, picked up by David Phillips, drives to the baseline, fires off the baseline, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound, pulled down by Brown of Woodbridge. Gets it outside to Lloyd, now to do the run, and Miller takes it away. Gets it to the west. As he works on Hunter Scott, gives it to Phillips. Phillips puts the shot up and in. David Phillips. 80 to 66. Tigers out by 14. A minute 50 to play. And Woodbridge wants a timeout. So West, a minute 46 up to play in the ball game. Woodbridge calls timeout. So a timeout on the floor. Let's take time in for this. We're back at Preston High School getting ready to start the last minute and 46 seconds of the ball game. And Woodbridge has outscored Preston in the fourth quarter. Eight field goals to five. Foul shooting has kept uh, the score as, as far as it is with the 14-point advantage now. But really, Princeton played the ball game in the third ball game. And um, we're ready to take the ball out. Woodbridge will take the ball out right down in front of us here. Taking the ball out, and there are a lot of new numbers in the ball game. It's Smith. Well, now wait a minute. Now we have a discussion. In the ball game now, we have Smith, Russell. We're going to have a lineup to get the man-to-man tied up and paired up. And... Um, Hope still at no. Number 40 is Woods. Woods started the ball game, but yeah, hasn't played Woods. a great deal. Number 30 is, is uh, Smith, and I don't have Smith's first name. Tim we have, Smith. we have two Smiths in there now. For Princeton, we have Curtis Graham, Joseph Harrison, Phillips, Jeff Adams, and Scooter Will. Okay, it'll be out of bounds to Woodbridge. And Andy Smith gets it inbounds to Tim Smith. Tim gives it back to Andy, and they go into the front court to Brown. Gives it back outside to Andy Smith. Gives it back to David Brown. He's firing no good rebound in heavy traffic. Fought for it, and Adams is fouled. It's Jeff Adams rebounding for the Tigers. Foul by number 30. That is Tim Smith, and that's number one on Tim, of course, since he just got into the ball game. Couldn't have a whole lot more than that. That's team foul. Uh, they're already in the bonus. And that'll put Jeff Adams on the free throw line for the Tigers. Jeff's a six foot six inch senior. 190 pounds, and he'll be on the free throw line. Jeff will fire with the right hand. He puts it up, and it's good. He'll get a second one. See, even our, even our, even our reserves can treat those well down here. Good. As Adams fires again, it's good. 80 to 66. As the West Virginia coaching staff said, they taught Jeff at the basketball camp up there this summer. He was up there for the basketball camp. Into the front court with us, Andy Smith of Woodbridge. Holds it up. They go underneath to David Brown in the lane. Fires no good. Rebound. Fourth four. We got a foul. I think it'll be on Jeff Adams. As Jeff tussling for the rebound, his call for the foul. And it will put Robert Brown on the free throw line for the Woodbridge Vikings. As Robert Brown will fire to go. No. They called it on the rebound, so it'll be out of bounds because the Tigers are on the bonus. He had only four free throws. That's only the fourth one in the second half. As the inbounded, and Phillips picks the inbound, bounce away. Out to Graham, on the break. Curtis goes under, lays it up, no good. Picked up by Phillips, no good. Rebound, comes back to Graham. Goes to the lane, drops it underneath, and they lose it out of bounds. <laughs> Enthusiasm counts for something, fellas. <laughs> 82 to 66. As Brian Randall. Gets it to Andy Smith, and Smith into the front court with a forward bridge, and the pass deflected out of bounds by Scooter Quill. And he'll be out to Woodbridge, and we will have Tim Smith inbounded, and he gets it in to Robert Brown, gives it back to Tim as he goes to baseline, and is lost out of bounds, is deflected by the Tigers, so it'll be out to the Vikings underneath. As Tim Smith inbounded to Robert Brown, gives it outside to Andy Smith, and Andy comes across the top of the lane, as Graham almost takes the ball away. Smith picks it up, fires no good. Rebound tips around, comes outside to Graham, and he overthrows David Phillips. And Harrison can't save it, so it'll be out of bounds to Woodbridge. As these guys leave and get that ball down the floor. Or had you noticed? And it'll be Andy Smith in battle for Woodbridge. He gets it into Brian Randall. Randall on the dribble with the left hand, brings it to the front court as Harrison puts a little pressure on him. Gets it over to Andy Smith. Fakes the shot. Gives it to Robert Brown. Firing off the baseline. No good. Rebound kicked around and out of bounds. And it'll be Tiger Ball on their own baseline. 
as Spooner Gwell inbounds it to Curtis Graham, and Curtis will move it to the front court for the Tigers. On the right-hand dribble, across the top of the key, they go to Scooter on the far side, looks at the bucket, now they try and get it to Harrison, the lane has the pass intercepted by Smith, gets it out to Randall, Randall goes down, puts it up for Woodbridge, no good, rebound. Foxhorn, we got a foul called on Woodbridge, and that foul may be called on uh, Tim Smith, I believe. It is on Tim Smith. That's number one on Tim. And that will put Jeff Adams at the free throw line. And Jeff uh, shoots the free throws very well since he was at the WVU basketball free throws. <laughs> As Jeff fires, it's off the iron, no good. Rebound pulled down by Woodbridge, lost out of bounds. And it'll be Tiger Ball on the base. No, it'll be Woodbridge Ball. Woodbridge will have it out of bounds. As Smith inbounds it to Randall. Randall on the dribble comes through traffic, loops it to the front court, starts it to the lane, fires out of the lane. Good. What a hard charging basket by Brian Randall. 82 to 68. As Curtis Graham in the backcourt, double teamed by Woodbridge. Ball not loose, picked up by Andy Smith and Joseph Harrison. Comes in to tie Smith. And so we'll have a jump ball. Between Andy Smith and Joseph Harrison, he'll jump into the center circle. 11 seconds to play. The Tigers are joined an 82 to 68 lead right now over Woodbridge, and it appears that we will have the Tigers in the finals of the Classic tomorrow night. As the tip controlled by the Tigers, as Adam picks it, loses on the floor, and Graham is decked with it, and Andy Smith comes out, puts the shot up, no good from Woodbridge. Ball <laughs> outside, and we'll jump it as we got a little soccer going on right now. And it'll be Robert Brown to jump against Jeff Adams. As Harrison's back in snowbird position, we only got four seconds on the clock, though. As the tip comes out of bounds, and it'll be out to Woodbridge with two seconds on the clock. Tim Smith then bounds it, and he's trying to go to Robert Brown. He puts something in. That's good. And the beauty of a play is they work the underneath. The final score, the Princeton Tigers. 82, the Woodbridge Vikings, 70 is a 12 point advantage for the Tigers. And the, in the final quarter, Woodbridge had 21 points, while the Tigers had 18. The final score, the Princeton Tigers, 82 to 70. And we'll be back with all the wrap up. First, let's fall for this. The Princeton Tigers victorious are tonight, 82 to 70 over the Woodbridge Vikings, and they'll move into the finals against the North Fork Blue Demons, who were victorious over Wheeling Park tonight by 69-66. And we're getting all the stats ready so forth, and we'll be back with them right after this. All right, at the gymnasium, the Tigers victorious 82 to 70. The ball game brought to you tonight on Big Way Radio on the Preston Classic, the first night owned by the Preston Bank and Trust Company, Jets Discount, Bondurant, Oldsmobile, Preston Pharmacy, Legacy Department Store, and Murphy Insurance Agency. Charlie, you ready? Okay, I got the game totals here for Woodbridge for the shooting. They uh, made 31 out of 72 from the field for 43%.